computer. And I'm going to guess we're probably recording because it always seems to start sooner than it tends to indicate <laughs> for some reason. Hello world. Um, welcome to Land Down Under and tonight we are talking about Rogue Protocol by Martha Wells. Woo. Which was um, Artificial Condition won the Hugo this year, but all three of them, so Rogue Protocol and Exit Strategy as well, were on the list. She had to actually tell them to take the other two off the list. The short list for the Hugo. Right. Wow. Because they were already published or they were already out there or? So they were all published within last year, first of oh. all. And they got enough nominations that all three of them got onto the short list. Oh, wow. And so she had to say to them, yeah, take off the last two and I'll just keep artificial condition on there. So well, is that the number one? Because I that's, lose control. That's number yeah. two. Because number, number one two. was published in 2017. So. Oh, all oh, right. Oh, yes, because number four is out. And we're reading that soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Makes much more sense. And then a full size novel later on. Sorry, Matt, I missed that. And then a full size novel coming. Yes. Well. Oh, unless that is number four. Well, full night. Uh, full size number novel is number five, isn't it? I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because right. there's four novelettes. Four novelettes. Novellas, novel, novellas, whatever. I get mixed novellas. up with which ones which sometimes. Sorry, anyway. running, running, off on a tangent there. My bad. Yeah. But I got to say, they're such nice books. It's so pretty. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so I, I will freely before we start passing around, I'll freely admit that I read these in January because I didn't know we were going to do these. <laughs> And so, um, and because I've just been, oh. I haven't had a chance to do a reread or barely even a skim. I just went and read a detailed review um, to try and remind myself as to what happened. But I do remember um, thinking at the time that I liked number two so much that this one was a little bit of a disappointment because I wanted art back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but otherwise, that I enjoyed this one still. I mean, it's. Murderbot. How, what can you not, how can you not like Murderbot? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's my start. Um, who would like to go next? Sarah? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go next. <laughs> um, well, I can see you preparing food. So if I get you done now and then you can eat. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a good move. And then I can mute myself. Um, yep. I enjoyed this. I did enjoy number two better. I think uh, there was some relationships here. Develop with art, I think, was a really lovely relationship. Um, the one with Mickey was interesting but I you know like it was kind of a little bit foreshadowed where it was going to go mm. um and but I, I I do like how um Ren is kind of falling into their the sec the uh the the consultant uh security person uh persona very nicely I I, I think they're kind of taking on this very nicely and uh, you know being inside their head is really great um and um what else i i was the only thing i'm a little disappointed by and we'll get into it is that it was more bots i was hopeful for something else not combat bots i was really hoping for a bit more of a a mystery and yeah um but i thought it was it was interesting and i'm now looking really looking forward to four because she because uh um, rin said um they're going back to see i've forgotten um yeah Spencer. Yeah, see, they're originally human. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna um, have to read yeah. it number four. I can re remember that one even less. <laughs> yeah, but it was a rollicking, a rollicking good ride as usual. You know, action, action movie in words. Wouldn't these make great movies? <laughs> it would. I was actually imagining be, it as I was reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I me mean, too. I'd want to be, although there's so much in Rin's head that you want to have that. If it makes sense, like I'd yeah. want to have some kind of snarky overlay voiceover because you just have to. It's not the same without it. So Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they'd have to find some device, some way of actually yeah. managing to make that happen. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Kim, since you sort oh. of started, do you want to keep going? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I thought it was a lot more like the first one in terms of her um, protecting all the humans again. Um, mm. I quite liked going back to that because I think the next one's probably going to be quite different. Um, because as she continues on her journey to unravel the mystery and get Grey Chris, um, yeah, it. Uh, I enjoyed it from beginning to end. I think it only took me like I only just finished reading it, but that's only because I'm lazy. I started reading it, stopped, and then just finished reading it. 
<laughs> as you do. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, really enjoyed it. I really love, sorry, a mental blanked. <laughs> Just really loved. That's, that's I just really, really loved it. That, let's just keep <laughs> it there. I'll, I'll, I'll think of whatever I was going to say later. Yeah, it'll be a discussion <laughs> point. Well, yeah. Matt, do you want to go? Sure. Um, uh, I'm going to rock the boat and say uh, this is probably my favourite of the three oh. that I've read so far. Um, I think, unsurprisingly to most people, uh, I don't care as much about the character relationships. Um, so. What I liked about this one. That said, I did like. Um, there's there's been this kind of steady, slow but steady progression of Metabot's uh, growth and personality, and how that's like slowly changing, not by leaps and bounds, but you know, just smaller bits and pieces along the way. Um, yeah. And that kind of came through a lot here, and I thought that was how she viewed Mickey and that box relationship with the humans uh i thought there was quite a lot of layers to to that mm. how how murderbot saw that relationship i don't yes. want to say ring because um, that's like a persona that you know is there but um but yeah i thought there was a few interesting um things at play there so i, I like how that progression has happened um but I just I just enjoyed the 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 setting. It kind of reminded me a, a, a had a little bit of a Die Hard and Aliens kind of feel. Mm. Like like um, Sarah was saying, it, it turned out to be combat bots and not like some sort of crazy weird alien stuff. Um, but I still like the whole thing of like that first part of the of the book where you you don't know what's happening and they're kind of doing the exploring out thing and like. A bit of mystery going on, and then like I like it when security mode engages, and like all the thought about okay, this is what I'm going to do now, and that's a that, those humans are fucking useless. That's a terrible idea. I'm going to do this thing, and this is why, and just like all that kind of kind of stuff going on. So like I had a ball reading this. I really enjoyed it. Yes. Well. <laughs> So, I bought this on Kindle quite a while ago, probably just after we did the last book, mm. and apparently read it, forgot that I'd read it, forgot that I'd bought it. Matt ended up paying for it a second time on Kindle because I'd forgotten that I'd bought it. Oh, no. <laughs> forgot that I'd read it, and then I started reading this again and going, is this really familiar? This is really I, I've read this. I've read this before. I had I had already read it, but I forgot that I'd read it, and so then I was like, now I have to reread it. But I only made it like fifty five percent through my reread. So, <laughs> so I, I did really enjoy it, and I, as I've been rereading, I've been like, I'm going, oh yeah, I remember, I really liked this, and I remember that, but I just didn't get to the end of the reread. So the I'm quite fuzzy on the details of the second half of the book now. But I did really enjoy it. But obviously, the details were. I think if it had been just a standalone book, it's not like it was a forgettable book. It's just that because we'd read the others, all the stuff that I was remembering from this, I kept thinking must have been book two. And then when I sat down to read this one, I was like, no, I definitely have read this one. Mm. So I think I was thinking all the stuff that I could remember with like Mickey and stuff. I definitely remembered that. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. So I remember the battle bots as well, but I don't remember the specifics of what she found out from the terraforming planet. No, me either. So we might have to, like, you might have to tell. I see that the other. I'm one. not sure that that um, Rin tells us tells tells no. us. No, I don't, I don't think she really no, does. No, she I never goes I into what she's downloaded. Okay, and but then we'll I get that. Because I was, I'm reading it and I'm like, I definitely remember everything. Like everything I've reread, I definitely remember. But now I'm starting to question myself and go, did I, did I just start rereading? Did I start reading it before I knock it to the end? Well, so, you're going to make sure you check you have a purchased exit strategy next time, right? I definitely haven't because <laughs> I went to, I did actually go to look at this on um, Kindle and I thought, oh, maybe mm. 
because I was running out of time, I thought, well, I've got a bit of driving to do. Maybe I'll just get the Kindle version. And then I was like, oh, it's still five bucks. And I've, we've already paid for it twice on Kindle. I'm oh, sorry, Audible, I should say. We've paid for it twice on Kindle. And I was thinking I'd get the Audible. Cool. And I was like, eh, it's mm. still five bucks is quite a lot for a novella. Yeah. When I've already paid for the Kindle one. And then I looked at the next one and it's like one whole credit or $14.95. And I was like, because I shouldn't have to pay $14.95 for something that's so short. Yeah. Not when you can get a Brandon Sanderson 60-hour epic for the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I'm yeah. like, what? And I kept thinking, well, hang on, how come the other one was cheap? And then I remembered because I bought the Kindle, that was why the other one was cheap. Yeah, so, I, that's I why I did Kindle for these. Plus, I actually, I like them not determining... Like I know that Rin, uh, thing, all clues have pointed to that that, that um, Rin has been genocised by humans as female, but I kind of like not having that forced upon me in the Audible version, mm. um, that it's still up in the air. Yeah, because, well, because you're not having somebody read it to you who has a distinctive voice. Although exactly. I think it's a sample to see what they sound like. So I do think... Okay. Um, I, yeah, I think that's probably a good point because I already do that and I have to stop myself because I know that in the book, Murderbot definitely doesn't want to identify as any gender. And yeah. I feel like it's kind of probably the same she, but my brain keeps doing that. And I don't know whether it's the author's voice that's coming through that's making me feel like it's um, I feel I like when... I was what, to an audio book of it and make it work. Number two... I'm pretty sure that that's where the clues came in um, because Rin was being, I keep saying Rin because uh, Murderbot has been calling itself Rin for a while now, you know, two, two yeah. humans. Um, I'm pretty I sure when Rin I was... I still think of it as Murderbot. So. <laughs> I do too, but I also, like, as I think Matt pointed to, there's a lot of personification of Rin uh, as self, like how um, Rin is identifying itself and developing uh their own personality so I, I and and that's coming along and so i kind of go yeah that seems to be part of it is you've named yourself you know um which is one of the most uh you know in, in human terms is one of the most powerful things you can do is to name yourself um to give yourself weight and bearing um but uh yes i'm pretty sure there were clues in number two when uh wasn't weren't they working in the spaceport you remember when they were working for the first stupid humans in the first in the second one? Yeah, they were. <laughs> it was my middle. Um, and there was some clues there. Um, yeah. but, um, I agree. I think there were some clues around um, how um, they appear to others. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it did what? mention somewhere in it or gave clues to the fact that her appearance was female. Like the the um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. the the body was structured on a female look. So oh, the yeah. question I would ask is: Has anybody? listen to the sample to see whether or not their voice sounds gendered because it could sound um like uh, androgynous in in terms of how it that'd sounds. be cool that'd be cool no yeah. idea uh, but to be fair i agree i wouldn't pay that much for it i, I have a rule i don't buy novellas on um or in audiobook because i've been mm -hmm. gypped by that before when i didn't realize it was short and i was just like what <laughs> yeah it, it, i could have had a service <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't understand why. But, I mean, I guess they'd still have to pay a voice actor, but surely you wouldn't have to pay them as much because you're not getting them for as many hours. Like. So but know. the question is, what are you paying for it if you didn't use a credit? That's the other question. And if you're not... But that's the thing that gets me, is that I feel like credit should be around that, you know, I don't know. Anyway. I'm, oh. The thing is, is that we buy books pretty much at the same price a lot of the time, regardless mm. of the thickness um and it's only really when it's novellas and things that we start to sort of yeah. question that sort of thing so yeah um so like these these ones them. cost me pretty much the same as a normal book would yeah are you buying it based but, on just yeah but the, the actual printing of books, entertainment your enjoyment of it or yeah the printing mm. of the books doesn't cost that much so there's a lot of other things that come into play which is more to do with paying the publisher and the author i think yeah yeah Anyway, um, I posted a link just into the Facebook chat there before. Um, I didn't realise it, but um, Martha Wells has done a did a one page short fiction in the series, so it's like a 
0.1. I read that. I did read it. Read that one? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, I'll have a look. Yeah. So it's very short um, and it was only published in December last year. Um, oh. But yeah. Which is after the last one was published. When is this set? Is it set? It's chronologically before number one. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So it's like a pre. Like, yeah, a it was pre like, thing. yeah, point. I don't know where I found it, but yeah, I read it too. Yeah, like so point is, it, is it before um, Murderbot has hacked their um, governor, governor thing, or is it? I'm pretty sure it's Finally, after. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's after based on the first it's after, paragraph. yeah. Sweet. But before, okay. the, yeah, before the first book. Hence, mm. So it's after the murdering. Yeah, it definitely would be after it's, the murdering. Um, it it um, happens in the place that she was before. Mm. Like, you know, in the second book where she goes to the oh, yeah, she goes where back. everything went she wrong? To go back. That's where this yep. story is, is yeah. from. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, that's where she had to go back and she was like, I remember this. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Good hangout, guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was great. We did. That's a okay. problem when we really like them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we all loved it. Yeah. Woo, what else is it? It's the ones that we really have issues with that are really fun to tear apart. That's um, the thing. Uh, I agree. I think it was Matt who was saying about the um the character development, which was it Matt who was saying that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I thought the character development is really good because I think that's how we're we're obviously leading towards um Metabot rejoining with the humans from the first book and um like that character development I think was almost necessary before that could happen again. And it, mm. so it's um it, even though it's always having Murderbot having to deal with stupid humans because, you know, humans are stupid. Um, yeah. it's, it's what's helped Murderbot actually develop the ability to want to go back. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, think it's also good. Oh, sorry. You go. I was just going to say, it's going to be, I think, better for the, um, between, Ren and Miss Missa 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 yeah it's Missa right uh, Minsa 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 um, right. yeah um, I think there was a hint of what could be a good friendship there human yeah. bot friendship but Ren was very uncomfortable with how to make that work or how to play it out and Ren's had some practice now um, mm. out and about um, and I think has a better handle on that which is good. So and I think also, that'll make that conversation go a lot easier when um, when Rin's presenting the information to to Mensa that she's gathered. Kirsten, I was going to say she, that they were also like um, noticing, kind of going, "Oh, I'm seem like I feel like I'm kind of jealous yes. about this yes. relationship that Mickey has with the humans," and I. Uh, I have to have an emotion about that and I'm not sure how, why I'm feeling this way. Like <laughs> it was this whole kind of internal monologue of like, but not I kind of feel like I'm jealous, but I don't understand why I'm jealous. Why would I be jealous of that? And but I don't think Murderbot actually said as much. It was more that there was this uncertainty about what even emotion it was because mm. there was never specific mm. mention of jealousy. Uh, and I remember in thinking, am I just interpreting that that way? I thought, but I thought I don't there was a specific mention. Actually, saying jealous though. I thought there was. No, I I wasn't sure it was jealous. I thought that might come later because I didn't know what it was. I was like, is is Ren annoyed about it? Like, you know, is Ren worried about it? Is like because I actually was what I, I thought initially that Ren was worried about about that. Like, not as for the humans, but for the bot to say, don't you can't trust humans, kind of thing. Like, this isn't a Okay, so the yeah, paragraph I was I talking know. about says, mm. I don't even know why I was reacting this way. Was I jealous of a human form bot? Uh, I didn't okay. want to be a pet robot. That's why I left Dr. Menza and the others. Um, mm. Not that Menza had said she wanted a pet sec unit. I don't think she wanted a sec unit at all. What did mm. Mickey have that I wanted? I had no idea. I didn't know what I wanted. So it's kind of like this acknowledgement of maybe it's jealousy, but I don't really know if it is. Yeah. And if it isn't, then what and I kind of got from that, that that it was almost sadness. Yeah. Maybe it was a wistfulness. Of, maybe yeah. wistfulness is the better thing. Yeah. Because as Rin said, I, I, you know, Mensa, I didn't, I, Mensa didn't want a, a, a robot at all. And it's kind of like, what would it be like to be wanted? 
you know, what yeah. would it be like to be um, needed in someone's life? Yeah. And not to be have humans react in the way that they do just because yeah. they're a sec unit, like this whole yeah. intimidation reaction that humans would have instead of seeing them as like more of an equal, I guess. I suppose I see that sort of as Metabot for, um, realizing that it's lonely and that um, mm. and that but it doesn't necessarily understand complex emotions yet. Like that higher level complex emotion is clearly why we're not really able to interpret what's going on there. I did find it quite cute and funny when she's like, "Excuse me, I just have to step out of the feed. I I just have to have an emotion. <laughs> I just need to have an emotion by myself." <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, that's so sweet. it was cute." <laughs> yeah. Poor Metabot. Mm. Yeah. I think she's still grasping with trying to understand her emotions, which is why she needs that time away from the people who want to protect her because she doesn't understand why because she doesn't have the yeah. experience. So she needs to go out and get the experience to know what she's well. feeling. She needs to grow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, Matt. Um, no, it's okay. Um, I was just going to say, it seems like in this world that they're uh, sort of like quiet discreet uh i don't know if it's like actual areas or groups or whatever of humans and they have quite differing values and opinions on ais and bots and this kind of thing and mm. most of the bots experience has been in the corporate side where they're just literally treated as property and, mm. and tools to be used mm. by but there are obviously these other groups of humans that are not necessarily within this corporate space that seem to have a much more accepting view of them and that that also seems to be like a, a lack of experience that murderbot has had like not yeah. really interacting with humans with these kind of um value, value systems so much. yeah yeah so she's talking point. about how she's not used to humans not feeling the need to watch other humans like there was no cameras around she's like mm, yeah. not used to people trusting each other at all nobody trusts each other where she's from yeah, yeah. Mm. in her experience she's never seen people who trust each other but i think she's also just plain being in a position where it wasn't even something to entertain yeah because she wasn't free to do that and she wasn't free to choose where she went prior to all of this and so what was the mm. point of even mm attempting to develop a relationship with anyone because you'll always be forced to move on by the corporation. Mm. I think I said she, I'm sorry. No. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered by it. Um, no, um, I know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm correcting myself, basically. <laughs> but if I, anyone does want to gender in their, they're gendered in their decisions of this particular character, that's that's your thing. I'm not. Um, I did think... I, Someone, someone go. Kirsten. I was just, <laughs> what Matt was just saying reminded of me of what we were talking about when we did our AI chat a while back and um, mm -hmm. about that conversation of, you know, like saying, feeling guilty about how you treat uh, a robot, even if it is only a robot and doesn't have, like, obviously in this story she has sentience, but like even like saying please and thank you to Siri and stuff like that. And it made me think, you know, some people are more predisposed to just sort of have that kind of empathy than others are, I guess. But so the question is yeah. then, are these, are these humans, so uh, is that what we're seeing with these humans, that Vertibot just happens to be engaging with those types of humans? Mm. Well, I think it's it's just the... I don't know. My my feeling is that it's very situational, and mm. that, that just Murderbot's sphere of experience has really just been with the kind of corporations where even people will feel like a number. Yeah, yeah, and and there's not really a lot of like we're seeing other humans now because they're not kind of involved in that corporate world. They're like yeah. other you know other governments and things like that so mm. yeah mm. i think that's like my favorite part of this series so far is just watching that slow coming to terms with developing 
a personality, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Just watching that happen. I think that's that's a really cool. And I mean, there's not all that much difference between what Murderbot's going through in a child in a lot of respects. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, like watching and experiencing through watching these shows, but also starting to interact with other humans and, and starting to develop an, an understanding of how to interact. And I mean, obviously it's done on a different level to a child and at a much faster pace, but it's still mm. the same kind of thing that's happening here. Because mm. previously, prior to the start of the books, I mean, I haven't read the short story yet, so I don't know, but prior to the start of the books, Murderbot was by situation because of the job that it was doing isolated mm. Mm. but also because it didn't want to be engaged with people too whereas now it's sort of been forced and so mm. I just was thinking then we've not really had any detailed um, experience in the books with other sex units um, certainly not of any kind of first person perspective. Yeah. Um, and I was just wondering then about, well, do they all have personalities inherent because they are actual AIs, uh, but the governor module sort of limits their development or whether they are not really capable of developing a personality at all and that's something that becomes manifest uh, once there's no governor module. Mm. Like the slightly different versions of developing personality, but one is a result of the governor module going away versus the idea that there's a personality inherent in the AI to start with, but it's not able to progress. I don't know. We met, I, uh, in the first one, we met a lot of other SEC units. And I do remember having that thought, which was, are they like Rin? Although Rin had not named itself at that point. Yeah. And they have possibility, but again, they're just trapped and they're not happy about what they're doing. Or, like it was interesting with the combat bots in this one, that they seemed really excited <laughs> by yeah. the possibility of fulfilling their destiny. You know, like they were like, it was like, this is what I was born to do. It's like Christmas trees, right? This is my but, Christmas and, wish. But, uh, I just want to be a tree that's decorated. That is, that is also, though, exactly what they have been born or programmed yeah. to do. Yeah. So the, the limited bit of intelligence they have. So they're not proper sentient AIs. But even if, like, I'm assuming whatever kind of programming stuff they're doing in this future where you can make smart enough things like this, that whatever kind of emotion substitute that a non-AI bot might have, you know, mm -hmm. they're programmed to feel that kind of excitement and enjoyment from combat. Mm, yeah. Like, that I feeling mean, of completion that comes from doing the thing that you've been programmed to do sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's do we an think addition. Ren gets that? Do, you think, do we feel like Ren gets that satisfaction? Even though Ren no. complains bitterly. Not so much from the fighting, but I think she enjoys doing a good job. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ren specifically doesn't okay. like um, killing. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the, but I, I think yeah. the protection thing seems to be definitely inbuilt. Even though it's like, even though nobody's ordering them to to kind of protect the humans, it's like, oh God, now I have mm. to protect the humans. Mm. But but there's not really that thing of oh, I'm just going to let them die. Like no, yeah. there's no callousness behind right. it. Yeah, no, because no. it seems like there's this. It's almost like um, Murderbot is kind of going, "Oh crap!" Like I don't want to have to care that, about what's going to happen to these humans, but I do care, and I'm kind of annoyed with myself yeah. that I care. It's like it's like the ship that Rin was on to get, you know, was one of the transporters, and the and the ship found out. The ship bot found out that you know, said, oh, you're a security consultant. Awesome. Can I use you to break up the fights on the ship? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I mean. You know, and Ren, Ren didn't want to do it, but, oh, God, damn it. I can't help myself. It's one of the, it yeah. seems like that situation of, like, 
I don't want to, but God damn it, I can't help myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. Like that seems, like you said, Matt, it seems inherently built in to yeah. run that just cannot help it when it comes to like doing that. Like I have to protect you from each other and stop you killing one another. Fine. <laughs> it makes sense from a um like the perspective of if you're the uh you know the programmers of these things that yeah. you, if they're gonna Give feel them. emotions because that's just uh yeah. something that results from these kind of neural brains well, they have flesh as well. Sure that they, yeah, and they yeah, aren't part organic. And I did get the sense when um, Rin was talking that part of their brains are organic. So yes. oh, yeah, sure. it could be that possibility there is growing and moving and, and changing. It's not, yeah. We can't stop you having emotions, but we can control them when they happen. No, because it used to, um, cause it mentioned like uh, in the first one that they erase their memories. So it sort of resets them so they don't. Mm. you know gain these perspectives i think they just reset them until they can't use them anymore until they're destroyed so that they can sort of Mm. push back the learning Mm. and the emotions and everything so they've got try and keep them as basic as possible more and more they actually remind me of the ancillaries in ancillary justice yes yes i think that was a really good point kim that um maybe not hacking the governor thing was what's made her be able to grow, but it's not getting deleted all the time. That's made yes. Mm-hmm. Like Janet. Janet? Mm. From The Good Place. Oh, I haven't oh, watched that. Yeah. There is something else I've read where that's a thing. Is it Blade Runner? Hmm? What's the one where they keep getting reset and they can remember like things are coming back to them? There's a movie or series. Ow. The day after oh, tomorrow. Um, the day after tomorrow with Tom Cruise, no, which was um, excellent. I had a mental blank. I can't remember the name. The Western um, robots. Oh. Westworld. Westworld. Yeah. Westworld. Yeah. They started remembering little bits and pieces. Stop that. Um, over time, so there was always a little bit that hadn't be, quite been deleted in their memories, and they saw. Yeah, had and I think there was also talk in that because they have organic parts. Yes, it's like that, you couldn't quite erase. You can't quite memories. erase. Um, I feel like I'm quoting Harry Potter here, but flesh memories. Yep. It's called, you know, like you know, with the snitch. Obliviate. <laughs> well, even a hard drive, if you don't erase it properly, mm. you can get things well, there back. Was, and Rin talked about it was when when uh, they went down to the diggers. Was it the diggers? Down, yeah. One down to one of the pods to get all the stuff and said that they were so they, they hit it to wipe but then shut everything down before it had finished actually wiping the backups of the backups. Yeah. And got the data from there. I was like, ha ha. Yeah, she said great. it was like it was still in the buffer. Like they'd turned them off before the that buffer really. had, had time to clear. So everything was still in the buffer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> Mm. And to your point, there's actually a quote at the end that I highlighted, which says, um, uh, Rin says, which I actually really liked, um, uh, how Rin escaped uh, to, like, went, you know, I'm just leaving. I'm going to get into one of those suits and just fly out. I was like, good for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I, liked, I, liked that, I, I liked that approach to just getting out of there because who knows what. There is a certain point where you go, as much as I don't want to care, I care, but I also realise where I have to go. That's a sunk cost opportunity. <laughs> I need to just leave you guys. Because I think that the um, other bad, the other bad, the other um, protected security person was still in with the other humans, right? In a frozen suit? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was still there in the frozen suit. Yeah. 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 Um, it says here, uh, what is it? Um, I hate caring about stuff, but apparently once you start, you can't just stop. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I literally just yeah. read that line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wasn't just going to send the Geopod data to Dr. Mensa. I was taking it to her personally. To personally, personally. Um, and then I lay back, laid down on the floor and started rising the fall of Sanctuary Moon from episode one. By the way, how good, I, I, for those of us who might remember reading it more recently, were the quotes that Rin used 
<laughs> on the on the other security agents quoting Secretary Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't believe that worked. <laughs> like you know, we can. I can guarantee you immunity. I don't know if that was true or not, but I told you. And that was to your point. There was like a right. Um, alien, there was a bit diehard because I was like, is John McClane in there somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, mm. uh, yeah, because there's, there's another bit that was a bit funny for me, but same kind of thing. Um, uh, where I said, consultant Rin has no a, a additional intel. Because why should I do her work for um, <laughs> She's saying, why should I do her work for her when I wasn't even getting a hard currency card? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. It's so funny. Yeah. I love um, her sarcasm. Her sarcasm uh, is just the best. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just could hear so you're like, get straight face. And then a uh, human's you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Um, yeah, there's just so many funny bits that I, I this bit I really liked was um, uh, no no telling what goes on in Bot Brains Wilkinson and then threw a glance at me. I stared straight ahead. If there was one thing good about the situation, it was reinforcing how great my decisions were to A, hack my government module and B, escape were. Being a sick unit sucked, but I couldn't wait to get back to my wild rogue rampage of hitching rides on bot pilot and transports and watching my cereal. <laughs> I, love, I love that it's a sick, a sick unit and they're like worried about the, the rampage that the sick unit is going to go on. And like I said, it's going hit, it's like riding on trains. Can... Yep. <laughs> watching, so and watching TV. Yeah. Uh, that's what makes Murderbot so good, though. It's like, ah, oh, so relatable. <laughs> oh totally totally um oh and then this was the bit i had i sorry i just have to share this because i love this but i actually burst out laughing at work um we needed to get everyone off the shuttle i was getting an idea it was probably a bad idea well when most of your training and technical thinking comes from adventure shows that tends to happen <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> at least it's not oh. horror movies I know, right? But I did think that was funny. Oh, but so it, it's really funny to think that people would think a sec unit, if it had its own free will, would just go kill everyone. Yeah. Because just because you're like really good at it doesn't mean you're going to do it. <laughs> no. And in fact, that's the thing is like, I can't help myself wanting to protect humans, which is mm. the purpose they've given it. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean I want, like, Sometimes yeah. I just need to get away from it. That's why I want to hide out in bot piloted, you know, mm. ships with nobody else, and mm. watch TV, yeah. and apparently handhold, handhold the bots through the emotional parts. Yeah, <laughs> I just always remember that part in part two where you know Art needed to watch it like four times. Do you remember? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Mark, yeah. Explain and it. Then we yeah. Got to the end and enough. like, and then and they're like, "Do you want to watch it again?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just had this vision of the two of them like if they were personified like sitting next to one and then Art would be like this mess of tears <laughs> Red holding and going are you okay and I don't quite get it but it's just it's so much <laughs> mm -hmm. Art's oh. not back in the full novel I'm going to be sad as uh, yeah maybe Art's had, had, had their own trajectory of um, personality the problem uh, for art is the problem with art is is that art is not um, free to do what it wants, and so I don't know how it would be involved. But I just want it back. <laughs> As does Rin. Rin. Rin hated art to begin with, and then just really missed art by the end of it. So H hence the name. But yeah. Mm. Mm. Um. So what did we think? Because I got a bit confused with the plot <laughs> um i'm not quite sure what wilkins and garth was doing yeah garth i think it was, it was yeah i think it was garth it was, yeah okay i got confused so i babysit because i was trying to suss through the thinking at the end so who sent the great chris send them to yes make yes. it come down I'm pretty sure yeah to make it back okay in. Yeah. So that, okay, so I got that. Then there's two things that still don't make sense to me. Then the combat bots, 
I got that they were just doing what they do, but then why did they just, why did they drag, why would, why did they grab uh, her, 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 her? I think they were in on it too. They, they were just meant to slow them down. Like the, the main point was to slow them down. Um, because obviously it had intel that um, the tractor beam was going to be destroyed. Right. So that, so it was yeah. to draw them further in. Yeah. And, and then, waste time. And waste time. If they could and kill then, them, great, but to waste time. <laughs> okay. So then the idea would be then that they were both, so if Rin hadn't have been there, Wilkins would have, because Wilkins went to grab and drag Donna Bean back hmm. to the ship, or to kill Donna Bean actually, and then Mickey was in the way. So was then Wilkins just going to run back to the ship and say they're both dead, but I'm here. We need to get going. Basically, with everybody else still alive. That's what he was with everyone, do. yeah. With everyone yeah. just still alive. Okay, and they would have just gone on to live their own lives, and it wouldn't have been that bad. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so that I mean, couldn't that work out. Sorry? That was their plan, but Grey Cruz never planned on them making it out. Yeah. Well, that's if they what, made it, they that... just didn't tell about it. If they made it out, then um, Fine. they were yeah. lucky and they'd get paid. But if they didn't make it out, Grey Chris would probably be very happy about that. Well, yeah. I kind of assumed that the combat bots kind of had a, a secondary purpose, which was to eliminate the two agents. I them. think their purpose was to elim slow down and eliminate whoever possible. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because actually that's a good point, Matt, because the bots showed back up at the shuttle. Yeah. Which would have suggested that they were there like so and there the was directive. That line, there's that line where Murderbot was like analysing what was going on and going, Oh, Wilkins or whatever was really surprised that the combat bots were there and active like that it wasn't in their you know they weren't reconnaissance, really they weren't that. they didn't have a heads up about those combat bots. So right. they, were, they were unaware that those, they were there. So, but then, but the, still, the combat bots grabbed grabbed one of them. Like that's the thing. The combat no, no, bots. One of the um, one of the the Don's party. Not yeah, one yeah, of yeah. The no, I know, but let's say, but that's the thing. They were doing this reconnaissance mission, which. Go back to my next one. Very weird. Um, so they were doing this reconnaissance mission. Then the the combat sh bots showed up like some kind of alien because they seemed to move really fast and grabbed Haroon, um, and then but didn't kill Haroon. Like didn't sit there and slaughter everyone. Just grabbed Haroon and then and I think was trying to get Donna Bean and then pull them back into the facility. Which had they or when did they deploy? Sorry, I know this is, but I was just getting a bit confused. So when did Wilkins and Garth deploy the um, the objective software? Because was that before that had happened and then to slow them down? Because then, yeah, like you said, they were surprised they turned up. But then I, I, that's the bit I'm, I'm kind of a bit confused with is like if they didn't know they were there, but then the direct, they, it, it pulled everyone into the facility, you know, because it didn't kill Haroon. It was like, what? Oh, um, I see what you mean. I, yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I think the logical thing there was that once they'd done that, once they'd uploaded that, then that was also going to be a trigger for the combat bots to activate. You know what I mean? Mm. So they, they but Wilkins um, and Garth didn't know what they would. Yeah. So do. they they upload their software just told to, to do something. Crash, yeah. But that uh, also owns to them. Yeah. It's also the thing that activated the combat bots, which yeah. is then designed to hold them there. And then anyone who ever knew anything about this gets burned up in the atmosphere yeah. as the as the thing. Yeah. Right. And Wilkins right. and Garth so, were pretty much the contingency plan if any survivors made it off the station again. Yeah. 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 So they managed to make it back, but they weren't expecting them to make it back because the, mur the, the murder bots, sorry, the combat bots were going after, they actually came up to the shuttle. So they were, you know, 
they would have actually slaughtered everybody. So Wilkins and Garth got screwed over by whoever their employer was as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Right. Just need to clarify because I was just trying to like understand where if the combat bots were just doing what combat bots do, like well, where did it kind of, yeah. yeah. This is all the little okay. details that I'm like, I can't remember. Yeah. You know. I can only assume that when Wilkins and Garth came in and um, activated everything, they didn't know what they were activating. Right, no, which makes a bit more sense. Aware, yeah. As far as they were, it was, oh, they were told it would do one thing and it actually did something else. Yeah. Right, they were expendable they as far expected. as whoever yeah. they were. Yeah. And then yeah. Grey Chris probably had a plan that if Wilkins or Garth survived and got to the wherever, that they'd just be assassinated as well, probably. Yeah. Well, they, well, they would never get them, them out. Pay. Yeah, or, or paid them, pay them out. But if yeah, they complained about it at all, they probably yeah. would have been assassinated. If they're like, you, you didn't tell us and you were going to kill us, they'd probably be like... But what? if they just showed up and said, we've done the job, the job is done with yeah, our they'd payment. they just get paid out. Yeah, maybe. No, I don't Who think knows? they would have because they were making a very specific point about what they were doing, what Grey Chris were trying to do was yeah. like amongst the worst things that, like, mm. I have a feeling they'd be killed either way. way. Yeah, no mm. one is supposed to do that. Yeah, so I, I think know, they may I have paid them, but then would have got paid. <laughs> <laughs> they might have paid them and then killed them later. And then killed them, yeah. yeah that, oh, that old thing where they're like, oh, good job, you did the thing, mm -hmm. now I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Well, like, I, was, I, I went, started going through the popular highlights on Kindle and one of them is, um, says, we were talking about Grey Chris here, whose company motto seemed to be profit by killing everybody and taking their stuff. Yep. Mm, yeah. yeah. I was going to actually Thank ask, you. is it just me or does it seem like this world is awful or is it because... We're seeing it from Murderbot's perspective and dealing with Grey Chris. I think it's because think, we're seeing it from Murderbot's perspective. From, yeah, from Ren's perspective. Yeah. Because we've met Mensa, who comes from, and, and her team, who come from a world, like a free world of some description, and it does sound kind of nice. Yeah. And, and then the... Um, and the and one the in nice this people with Mickey, they were nice. Yeah, that, that, yeah that I can't team. remember the na main name, but she's like, sec units yeah. aren't allowed where they're from seems, they don't they're they're illegal to have a, something yeah. like a sec unit yeah it just seems so yeah, corporate them. driven but again yeah. that might be the perspective so i think oh, that's well, the perspective because it doesn't sound like from all the humans she's met that she likes that any of the nice people weren't involved in that corporate thing and they got caught up in it maybe but the nice people weren't really from a world where that seemed to be mm. something that was common mm. Well, I was just thinking, like, in, if you look at, if you start looking at the multinational co corporations, you know, in real life, if you, if that was all you were looking at about planet Earth, you'd start thinking, Jesus, this is a pretty shit place. Yeah. Because well, I also had, um, when, you are. on her way, on her way there, she was actually with a bunch of people who thought, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to work for this corporation and we're giving up this much of our lives, but then we'll have heaps of money. She knew better, but these people didn't. So these people no, are quite true. trusting. So it's not a yeah. world that they come from really no. either. Yeah, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. So it seems a lot of people don't really, yeah, the corporate, oh, corporations seem think, pretty, some they're of the corporations right. seem to be pretty evil. Because to me, it seems like the public the corporation exactly. is not always what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. To me, it reminds me of like the difference between Australia and America when it comes to deal with corporations. Not that Australia is fantastic, but when you see what American companies get away with. Hmm. Here we're just happy to let you send all your um, profits to Ireland and not pay any tax. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> or, yeah, like, sell out. But at least, your work, at least our workers don't have to pee in bottles. Oh, my God. How did you know I was thinking of Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to, isn't it? So yeah, all the stories that come out about Amazon, you're like, oh, and God. yet we're still giving them our money. Yeah, yeah, I know. I ordered something from them today. <laughs> yeah, it's hard well, not to. Sometimes when it's the only place you can get something, sometimes. Which was, I, I'm going to guess, was the case. Nye asked me to order this thing, but um, yeah, he usually does his re research and he's got his own avenues to order technology things. So if he's asked me to order it, it must be because this was the place to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and audio books and stuff. It's just yeah, I guess it's something something oh, digital is not so bad. Yeah. There's not someone stuck in a warehouse working a 10-hour shift on their feet having to run around yes. and get told off because they couldn't do something unrealistic. 
Yeah, but there are people um, who have to make it happen in other ways who end up having yep. to work stupid hours. You just have to look at the gaming, the video gaming yeah. um, manufacturers and like what they've done to developers and the expectations they set. So that's rampant there too. But yes. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Are we getting off topic? Yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Kind of, nothing wrong with that. Kind of, sort of. We're still, topic. still related to. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about the corporate world and and how the this world is world. related. How it mm. sucks. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I mean, this has been taken to um, mm. a bigger extreme, but I yeah. wouldn't argue by that much. Like if you look mm. at, um, I mean, yeah. I bought a new dress today. I bought mm. a new dress today. Um, I, I saw the bag. <laughs> but like, how do I know? I could, it wasn't a cheap dress, but. Mm. Was it made in a sweatshop? Probably. Yes. Mm. Is it the one that we were looking at last week? No. Um, yeah. I haven't actually ordered that one yet. But no, it was from Portman. Yeah, so, but yeah, you're right. It's pretty expensive because... dress for me. Like, that's a lot of money for me to spend on one dress. To wear to a wedding, not even next, until next year. And I probably won't get a fit in for then. Oh, I haven't let Karina know about it. But, um, but yeah, it's like, you. I, I was watching a, a thing about, um, did you see about the thing that there was like a building that had a whole lot of sweatshops in it and it collapsed? Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Mm-hmm. It was. I think yeah. it's happened a few times back actually. Back. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and it's like it the problem is you can't just go. Mm. You can't just go. Oh well, I won't buy the cheap stuff from Kmart because it was made in a sweatshop because the really expensive dress that you buy in the fancy shop is yeah. made in the same factory, and yeah, you exactly. can't even. You can't even go, oh, well, price definitely means that. No. No. You're going to not be no. And Sometimes you look around, like you look at, like do an image search, and you'll find a dress on Wish for like $12. And then I've looked on a website that's selling dresses and the same dress is like $53. I'm like, that's the exact same image. Yeah. But sometimes um, and it's not, it's not a brand designer that they've ripped off. This isn't a brand designer site. Their stuff is from China. So... Yeah, because what happens supplier. is somebody yeah. manufactures all of this stuff and then yeah. those are um, on sellers. Yes. So. But yeah. also Wish is notorious for just using images that look nothing like Oh, yes. Actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you guys watch Sophia Nagara, that's yes. one of my, yeah. it's one of my <laughs> favourite segments <laughs> that she does is when she orders yeah. those things. Happens all the time. Most of the and stuff like, that doesn't look here's like the, it. Here's yeah. the dress I bought from, uh, and my favourite one she just did was she was like, this this one looks pretty good. It looks a little bit, you know, more more. You know, do exactly what you said there. Um, this looks a little bit better, you know, than wish. It looks like it's a more legit. Says it's going to be here in two weeks. All right, it's six weeks later and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was always sitting and see that, and I'm like, yeah, but I, uh, if I'm not ordering it from within Australia, that happens anyway. Like, I haven't actually yeah. found wish to be that bad with um shipping time. Oh, it's average. Oh, well, actually, I haven't ordered anything, but from what I've heard people say, it's the same as everywhere else when you order something from China. Yeah. It just takes Well, I mean, I've and had... I, and I, I've think had been, I think we're better, we're better, we get it better than the States. Yes, we get things here. a lot we quicker because I've ordered faster. things that I've seen, like I order things on AliExpress sometimes and mm-hmm. I will get them way quicker than people in the US say they get AliExpress mm-hmm. things. Well, we're, it takes we're ages and it's actually closer. quick to Australia. Yeah, and I think we've got a trade route, a trade route with China which goes back and forth, whereas it's not one way. Yeah. So um, yeah. a lot of things do go get shipped. Um, so we we send coal to China, and then they send us goods. So yeah, you know, it's there's yeah there's um, there's a lot of stuff we send send there, and then yeah. So which is always yeah. made a little bit easier if there's a back and forth. Whereas with yeah. um, the yeah. states, it's not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to suggest question. we have strayed rather off the topic now. Mm. <laughs> well, my question was, it's it's kind of beside the topic. Is how do you on the Kindle? I want to see the popular highlights. I've turned them on. Is there a way um, of displaying all of them, I'm, like so I can flick through them? I'm looking on um, the Kindle on my phone. Um, yeah. So yeah, on find it easier there too. Um, there was like, you know, like oh god, that's can I? I don't get it I, really close to the monitor. So <laughs> to the like camera. I clicked the like, okay, mm. I clicked the little yeah. lines at the top there, and then I think popular, popular highlights, highlights is there. Yeah. So I just clicked popular highlights and then it lists the popular highlights. Gives you highlights. a list? Oh, yeah. okay. Because I can turn I don't them know on how to do it on the actual Kindle because I only just figured out how to do it on this because I was like, surely there's a way to show all. Like, as I was reading, I was noticing them highlighting because I always yeah, 
I turn mine off because I get really distracted by what everybody else thinks. Yeah. So I wanted to turn them off, but then I like turning them on later. And I was like, okay, that's good. I do find Where it interesting because I'm like, sometimes it's like it makes you pay attention to stuff and it's like almost mm. doubles down on the foreshadowing. Like if someone's read it before and they noticed an important thing and then they highlight uh, it. I, mean, I know, but I just it. sometimes I just want to be in it rather than. Yeah. 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 Oh, excuse me. Um, where the hell is this? Okay. Anyway, I got reading options, but I want to see it. Highlight. I love the, the voice I get in my head from Murderbot. Like, why, well, yes, I did want to disengage the safety protocols. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I can just hear it in my head the way it would be said, and I love it. Yeah. Well, it's okay, like that so bit of the end. Yes, I figured, I figured out how to do it on the I, on the Kindle. Yeah. Um, so if you if you go to so when you're inside the book if you yes. on the menu go to go to on the top right hand corner okay yeah go to you got the contents and then there's across yes. the top notes yeah and then in that area under notes you can see yours popular and public so popular oh and that's where it is popular I did see yeah, I kept thinking it was just mine okay oh that's much better thank you Mel cool I just want okay. to see what there was and see if there was any discussion topics. No, because um, I'm with you. I actually kind of like looking at them now and then, especially for um, discussions. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry, things like this. They were all annoying and deeply inadequate humans, but I didn't want to kill them. Okay, maybe a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like the bit where um, I love that bit where uh, at the end where it uh, it murder uh, um made the uh, drone hover in front of Wilkins for 26 seconds. It was so precise. You know, yes, I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was quite good. Um, I thought there's a few things that um, Murderbot was talking about with, with in relation to the, the shows, like the serials that it was watching and uh, that I've seen come up on the popular highlights that I was like, I thought it was really interesting where it was like, there's the right kind of unrealistic and the wrong kind of unrealistic. And I'm like, that is so true. Because mm -hmm. I can like suspend disbelief about so many things, but then like there'll be this little thing that's wrong and it will piss me off so much. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, and everybody's a little like, bit different about what that thing is. What pisses too. them off. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was like, that is so true. That is so true. And the other one she was saying was like watching I don't want to see helpless humans. I'd rather see smart ones ah, next to each other. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting because I kind of, in my brain, did this little thing of... Damn, yeah, like that, That in looking at it from a gender perspective of, mm. like, I don't mm. like, like not, not wanting to see women that are just like, I need someone to come in and save me, but are willing mm. to, like, get in there and do stuff themselves. And I'm like, I, I kind of think... Maybe that's what the author was kind of going with there. Because there was another bit that I thought also kind of could be talked about in terms of how women have been historically treated. Because Murderbot said something like, um, what was it? It was on this popular highlights as well. Something about, um, I think it wasn't on the highlights. Oh, here, yeah, about um, a happy medium between being treated as a terrifying murder machine and being infantil and infant I can't say infantilized. Right. Infantilized. Yeah. And I was like, not the new murder machine part, but, like, if you replace that, that bit with um, being sort of a sexual object. Yeah. You could kind of say that, you know, with women, historically, it's been you're either a sex object or you're treated like an infant. Mm. That can't or, or the yeah, or the Madonna or whore they were saying there. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was really interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, um, I, don't know I, I find that I find it fascinating because the way we were talking about Murderbot before, in terms of describing how it wants to almost disconnect from people, but also finds itself drawn in, reminded mm -hmm. me a lot of a teenager. Mm. That's true. Mm. Yeah, the and way they sort of like, I just don't care about anything, and I'm not engaged at all. But they learn to, over time, they learn to engage and learn to become part of the mm. world, mm -hmm. and learn who they are and and what. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. of those. Start things. deciding 
working out who they are apart from being because that's what's so hard about being a teenager is that you're trying to figure out who you are and not who your parents yeah. decided they want you to be and who your family are mm. yeah so and initially they usually go with the, the their friends as a model and hopefully eventually they learn not to rely so much on that yeah oh um, terrifying me now i'm sorry sorry <laughs> <You're> terrifying <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm having a flash forward of my brain of going, oh God, I'm going to have to deal with teenagers. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to be crap. <laughs> this is one of um, the reasons I'm no longer teaching in the high school. <laughs> yes, we were all teenagers, At least you can walk right? away from those ones. You know, we were all teenagers. I wouldn't teenagers have to deal like... with myself either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't help, Matt, because I remember. Mm. Yeah. And I was a teenager, but I was still horrible. Yeah. Uh, I'm um, sorry. Quick tangent. Does anybody listen to 99% Invisible and does anyone listen to John Green's um, The Anthropocene Reviewed? I haven't listened to uh, them for a long time, but I okay. have. I, so I, I listen to The Anthropocene uh, fairly regularly. Excellent. So John Green got interviewed by Roman Mars on 99% Invisible. They played a few, you know, an episode of, you know, of The Anthropocene Reviewed and then he interviewed John Green. It is one of the best interviews because it's two people I love and respect just making me laugh. And one of the things they talked about, as a matter of thing here, is they talked about how their teenage selves seem to be defining themselves by what they what they didn't like and not mm. what they liked. Yes. And John Green was because Roman Mars says, I feel like you, you and I were the same, like we were the same. Like why do we were so defined by what we didn't like and then and then um, and John Green said something. He said, "Yeah, I, I have learned now not to mock, mock what I am going to become." <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so it was really. I, I think that's so true of like you know teenagers and um, you know we were all once teenagers and it's 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 uh, it's one of those things of I I am that person that I probably mocked as a teenager. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, and, I'm trying uh, to find the anyway. episode. Oh, here it is. Three hundred and fifty-seven. It's um yeah you'll know the anthropocene review but it's the 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 interview is about half an hour and that's worth it that's worth it just for the interview. It's that's all right. I mean it's easy enough to skip through. So yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know which which one's getting low. Um, what was I going to ask? No, nope, forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Um, was anyone else disappointed by the fact there were combat bots again and we didn't get to, or, you know, I, I really wanted some alien technology. We've only been talking about it for three freaking novellas. <laughs> I, I, I can't Maybe remember next one. if I was disappointed, but I think it's part of the reason why I couldn't remember that this was a different book. Like, uh, I can remember the things yeah. that happened in this book, but for some reason in my brain, I'd, I'd kind of melded it in with the other two books somehow. Mm. And then as I sat down to read it and I was like, oh, no, I definitely have read this. I remember reading this. Mm. But I had, for some reason, not thought that I'd read number three. So I think that could be part of the problem. Like I can't remember what happened in two other than they got their money and, and um, Ren went on a whole, like, down into the mines exercise. I remember the mines exercise because I found that quite scary. But I don't actually remember like what mm. Rin was doing for the other consultants. Um, the other consultants were basically they had somebody was being held hostage from their group, mm -hmm. and um, Ren needed a way to get onto that station or whatever it was, um, uh -huh. and so that they, they wanted to go there to pick up their person or their hostage or whatever it was that was um, that 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 the corporation had. And so yeah. Ren went with them as they as Ren, uh, as their way onto that space, right? And that's how um, it started off with the whole security detail type thing. Mm. Yeah, I've definitely melded these stories together in my head. See, I yeah, remember I number two remember so everything. well, and number one, I can't remember number four at all. Which I'm sort of like. Is maybe if I just pick it up and start, I might might be triggered yeah. or something. You probably Whereas, will. Yeah. That's what happened with me. I was like, I don't think I've read number three, and then yeah. I was reading. So, I was like, oh yes, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that yeah. thing happening. It was the same. I remember like, one very well because I read. I did read it twice, but it's also on a planet. 
So I do remember it being yeah. on a planet, alien you know. Life. And I think yeah, with alien was- life and there was like, you know, piloting shuttles around and everything. So that's, but, and two, the things I remember have nothing to do with what the action adventure was. Um, and I get it confused for some reason. I get it confused with the second book in the Bicky Chambers series where the AI yeah. sentient and also on a, um, you know, um, yes. on a, on a I transport hub. <laughs> they go, and I get the two, I get the two of them confused. I'm like, everyone's in transport hub. Who's doing what story? <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. And I, and I think with these ones, they're both sort of stations and they're both yeah. kind of not a lot of other people involved. And yeah. Oh, my this brain. did have a good alien feel to it, though. I agree with Matt. I, that that was that's why I was so disappointed it wasn't aliens. Because I was like, oh, what is it? It moves. I want to so see fast, the alien and stuff. It has tentacles. I, I was like, oh, and it was yeah. grabbing what, like, you know, a big head. And I was like, I reckon that might it? be something that might get saved for like the full novel. Because I think. Mm. Yeah, I think I think. I think it might be from my memory. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say anything. So. No, I was going to say, I think it, there might be, they might find little bits of alien tech here and there, but I think sentient aliens are still around. They haven't really talked about them and if they kind of exist at the moment. I didn't mind if they're not sentient, I mean, or not intelligent, I should say. I just, you know, I just thought there was like something had been left lo- lo- like let loose or they you know pulled something up or woken something up you know like we've had that big worm or monster or whatever yeah, it was yeah. number one and i kind of wanted to or i was imagining some i know i had a cthulhu kind of image in my head when they were describing <laughs> the, mm, you know yeah. like in a mood fast tentacles. and i was imagining tentacles and things yeah. like you know the umbrella academy i was kind of my hentai uh, sorry no <laughs> that's the fan fiction I was going straight because I've just been reading um, Anne Letty's Provenance oh and for Space Opera September you, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's on my list it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's very planet bound actually it's not very space opera and I was like hope I still get another, away with it another planet not Earth but there's okay. like a, a there's like a mech in that story that's like shaped like a spiderish type shape, and so I right. just kept reading that, and then I was reading this, and I was like imagining this spidery type thing instead of tentacles. Yeah. I talked about lots of legs. I went straight to spider in my brain, and I was like, two books with spider robots in a row. This is weird. <laughs> well, I had like I I just thought it was bio, you know more biological than the bot. Yeah, but I had also like. Yeah. But I'd also, also I, I was rereading it, and I'd I'd consciously forgotten it, but obviously I'd remembered quite a lot. So maybe that was why I straight away wasn't yeah. thinking biologi- biological, because I might have thought that the first time I read it, but the second right. time I might have had. And what's the book you're reading? What's the other one that you're reading? Providence. Providence. By Anne Lecky. You know the. Oh, um, Anne Lecky. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's in the same world as the um. Antilles. The Quayan, and it was okay. really, I really enjoyed it. I, I actually, I think I liked it more than I liked the um, ancillaries, but most probably because I found the ancillary stuff really confusing. So I was going to say I enjoyed one, and by the time I got to two, though, I was getting like, and not to do with the like, not to do with the chip, but to do with everybody else. <laughs> I got pretty confused at who was who. Like, yeah, well, that was my people. problem. I got really mixed, yeah. up and um. Yeah, I did. I read all three and I did enjoy them, but I liked mm. them more. I don't know why. I just did. Yeah. And I thought the gendered stuff was really interesting in this one because, um, like in the Raja Eye, they just use she for everything. But mm. In this culture, they actually have three genders, mm. and um, and then they have like, they have a a child name and child gender, like from birth, and then when they should become an adult they choose a new name and they can decide their gender at adulthood. And that they're not only when they become an adult, they decide when they decide that they're going to be an adult. Like because there's this bit where this one character is like really like in her twenties and she hasn't decided to become an adult officially yet because she's been putting it off because she's like, but I don't feel like an adult. And I'm like, that's everybody. Oh, <laughs> yes, everybody. I was going to say, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was kind of like a murder mystery type story, which I'm not normally a fan of, but I like 
No, I like you know, a good murder mystery. This is good, actually. The first answer, where I haven't gone back to it yet, but maybe, maybe I should. I felt this was an easier read. It was less confusing, but they do kind of hint about some things that happened in the um the other ones, but I'd forgotten. So I'm like, mm. what's going on? Why are they doing that? Like they'll they'll kind of mention stuff that's happened in the news feed about what's going on that's actually from the other books. And I'm like, oh. I remember there was a reason why that was happening, but I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> wow. Nice little touches to the world. So if you're really sensitive to spoilers, you probably shouldn't read this one first, but I don't think it's... been really interesting that two of the more compelling characters of human side were female so Mensa led was leading the first crew in the first book you know and uh Rin had, had a lot of respect for her um mm -hmm. being a smart human um and uh, Donna Bean the same yeah. Um, so I thought there was, I, um, I thought when you were talking about, look, you know, is there some parallels that possibly the author is drawing? I do think there's some nice parallels the author has in, as terms of the, those who are in charge have been women that, um, Rin has really respected. So that was, mm. I, 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 cause I have noticed that I'm like, oh, that's really cool, you mm. know, and I, but I don't also don't know, um, with Mickey, it would have been interesting dynamic if it was different but i don't know like you know uh the reading or the take on it i'm not yeah. sure and mm. i didn't even like i don't think she really said anything to like way over halfway through the book that the um two um security guy guards were actually women because she says she for both of them at one point yeah i knew that one was at the beginning yeah um, but then the other that one was referred to but i didn't know about well. the other one yeah yeah somewhere near the end of it for the other one for Garth. Yeah, I yeah, exactly. I think I picked up on it at the end as well. Um I knew Wilkins was. I got really confused who was going with who when that whole bit and I was <laughs> like, isn't Donna been going that way? And then what and then oh no, there oh I got very confused. <laughs> Couldn't work it out. Um who was going back to the ship and who wasn't and yeah, yeah, I remember that. But interesting. Um Oh. Sorry. I just caught your yawn. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Time and space. They are contagious. Uh, there goes Kim. <laughs> yep. I always get triggered. I'm resisting. Oh, it'll come back to me again. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying not to. Yeah, yeah, I can't help it. Sorry. I cannot let you all yawn alone. <laughs> Stop talking about it. I'm literally saying in my head, don't yawn, don't yawn, don't yawn, don't yawn. <laughs> Comment below if you're watching and just yawn. <laughs> <laughs> Social experiment. Like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to hit that notification bell. Smash, uh, yeah. smash that like button or whatever. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. I, I think we've got like two two subscribers at this stage so <laughs> <laughs> they're probably us i was gonna say one yeah. was probably me um, one i'm pretty sure me. one's me as well so yeah um yeah um, i don't think we've got anybody outside the group that's okay karina's safe <laughs> <laughs> this is true um have we got anything yeah, else from the know. book guys i don't think so not i i think we all enjoyed it I think yeah. it's oh, setting yeah. up a nice little story, a nice little development. And that's the thing, like it could have been easily like all these novellas could have been packed together, you know, um mm -hmm. into a nice big book book. Was, but, was yeah, it's nice. I think <coughs> I like having them because they're such separate stories, it's it's good to yeah. have them all in novellas. That's true too. Yeah. But I would like that's like a, a collected one at the end so I can buy yeah. it. <laughs> Is it safe to assume that We'll add the fourth one at some point. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, well, what say the fourth one? We'll we'll do a pick for the fourth one. It's already in the calendar. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, it's already it's scheduled, guys. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Guys, yeah, it's, it's the only one who doesn't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's in November. So we've got Sunstone next month, and then we've got um, uh, Exit Strategy, the fourth one, in November. Oh, and cool. Sorry, I only ever yeah. looked that far ahead. Sorry. No, well, uh, Sarah specifically requested it, and everybody wanted to do it. So I just went ahead and scheduled all for Lock for more at the moment. Yeah. Well, I could not even know we had one, and then it was like, oh, they're all out. I'm like, well, Let's, let's do them both. <laughs> so, a little break between, and it's great. Yeah, well, that's why I did it that way around, so there wasn't too no, intense like or anything. I like it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, and I'm going to do. Um, I've got my Kindle. I've got my my, my Audible credits. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a bit behind actually on on the old credits because I think. Me too. I've cancelled my subscription again. I used up my credits. And then cancelled again because I was just like, nope, got too many books. Yeah. Whereas I can't, yeah. Not, I can't, I can't not have it because I need to be listening to it when I'm driving. Yeah, I just I don't. Know. Know. I think I've got too many in reserve. That's on, the problem. I could yeah. catch up on podcasts for a lot, but then I'm also like, I would not get any reading done if I didn't mm. audible. And yeah, I'm like, well, I can either listen to podcasts on the way to work and then not get as many books done in the year that I would like to. Like, I've got yep. so many things I want to read, and it's the only way I really get any reading done. I, I read a chapter before bed of a physical book or a Kindle book and then pass out. Mm. So, yeah. like, I couldn't even get this finished in time, and I started reading it, like, a week ago. But, no, it wasn't really a week ago because I was still finishing. That was the problem, too. I was finishing reading um, Growing Up Aboriginal in Australia. Uh, yes. I borrowed it from like the library, and I'd already... Um, I'd already done a extension on it, like it was a, a an ebook borrow, and I'd already mm. get extend on it, and it won't let you do it more than once. And I was like, well, I need to finish this, and I don't want to have to try and borrow it again. Yeah. Um, so I just was pushing through to finish that, and then I wasn't feeling well, and I went to bed early, and then. Well, I think it's fine. It's not a big deal or anything. Um, but yeah, I, I. I agree with you because it's like this week, all of a lot of the podcasts I listen to have sort of have um, cut back on how many they're producing, which has been great actually because I'm sort of like because I like keeping up with them. Mm. And um, but this week it's like they all came out at once, and I just had so many plus the ones that come out weekly, and I was just like, I can't keep up with all this. Today I finally caught up and I started a new audio book, and I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Oh, yes, I went to cancel my Audible because I'm like, I don't need a credit this month. And they're like, keep listening for less. No. <laughs> yes, no. thank you. <laughs> it's like they know that I'm <laughs> Yeah, they know. Yeah. Well, I, I probably wouldn't have renewed it until I actually wanted another book. Audible, well, to be fair, I didn't so. get it offered when I cancelled this time. But to be fair, I got it offered last time. Yes. And I, I used the three months for half price. And then that's when I cancelled again. So... You know, if they'd offered it to me again, that would have probably been overkill for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. No. I'm looking at my Audible app. Oh, you all there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um, your photo. Oh, my photo? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was busy looking at Audible to try and see how many credits I have, but I don't think it shows you in the app. I think you have to go to the site. Yeah, yeah I just have the website bookmarked. You have to go to the site, yeah. Yeah, because they've got I have the website thing. bookmarked on my phone because I, I go there so regularly on this. So. I've been trying to go there every day because... The I'm daily wondering. deals. Yeah, I, I missed out on a daily deal that I would have done. But, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and every time, like, I've check, been checking it pretty well for the last, like, two weeks, and it's always bloody crime and non yeah crap about business and I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the two that they've started doing the new thing, I don't know if you guys saw, they've started doing a new thing where you get a, um, a free book each month that doesn't count for your credit. Like it's just a free yeah. one that everyone gets. Yeah, yeah, but the editors pick it, right? Yeah. yeah. They're both the ones that I haven't really been to. Are we still in the hangout for the book? I yes, do, I was just so going to say, we let's can close it off. All right, anyway, yeah, I think I finished. Bye. 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 Good book, Bye. read it. Yep.